show you see opened literally the day before the city shut down. It is by an artist who truly dwells at the intersection of art and technology. I want to die here. It's cool. I am leading you with the best in the biz to protect you and your work. How are you coming out of that cage? I said under no circumstances would I leave here before 120 days ago. What was that? to bring her the world premiere of Project Space 13. I also kind of have to just mention, I love that it's premiering during Art Basel weekend. Yeah. Know, Feels like something. Really kind of funny coincidence. <laughs> so at what point over the pandemic did you write and make this? Um, well, we were going to make another movie, and it became kind of not doable uh, because production-wise and just the idea of it felt very um, all of a sudden. Oh, look at his hair. Yeah. Anyways, what I was getting at is um, everything felt anything that was like a week old felt like it was a hundred years old, and everything like trying to envision the, the future is hard to even imagine like a week in the future. So. We wanted to sing in the present tense, and I guess it was we wrote it in, or I wrote it in um, July, <laughs> in July um, 20, 2020, in like uh, four days, just really fast, and then we shot it uh, a few months later, in a few days also. <laughs> I love how you captured like all the tension of the time and everything, so were you shooting the actual riots as they were happening? Did you see all the footage? Uh, we shot some stuff <laughs> in there. <laughs> uh, no, but it was like the, uh, we shot between Halloween and the election, and it, yeah, it was mostly just dead in the streets. So like all the stuff at the like stores and stuff that was what we were shooting. And I love that you. Oh yeah, no, Sean. I was, say, I was away for the entire thing, uh, so I kind of was really wanted them to uh, put in footage. From the real stuff, just because. Also, I I know when it was happening, you everybody was watching everything happening on the phones and everything. But also, it becomes clear quickly after that that stuff disappears. And then it was actually very tricky to find good. You know, everyone has memories of, of that of those nights or whatever. I was just remote. I was very far away watching, and I just kind of was like, archivally, it'd be interesting if we have a ton of that stuff. But that you know, but uh, it became harder and harder to find the good stuff, I guess. But I just wanted to see it. Because also there was a there was a strict kind of, when we were shooting. I was like, we'd never see outside. But yeah, that was kind of originally the thing, and then that stuff kind of crept in. So but I just thought it'd be more interesting to see it. But, I don't know. but we also we shot right around the election, and I don't know if you remember, but they were like boarding everything up in case the election went a certain way. So actually, like <laughs> early November looks sort of in some ways kind of like the summertime. I mean, in, in certain like boarded up ways. But maybe we were hoping for just getting new good stuff of the same thing again on a better camera than on cell phones. But it didn't happen. I kind of like the way that the cell phone footage looks mixed in with it, though. It, it feels like it lends to it. Um, how did you and uh, Michael prepare for this, like, how, in terms of like coming up with like the aesthetic for this? Yeah, this was the most uh, unorthodox pre-production ever, uh, because Everyone, no one was hanging out, no one was really around. Theo was upstate, Sean was in Europe, um, Hunter was working on something, so we weren't able to rehearse at all, you know, so that's like normally something you would do. Um, so it really was asking a lot out of everyone to not, uh, to just go in and shoot for a couple of days, not rehearsing. Um, so yeah, and with Sean also it was, we didn't really do too much pre-production either. We watched uh, an episode of Family Ties and um, Kamikaze 89. <laughs> and uh, that was about the extent of our discussion. The Family Ties episode is something that we recognized that meant a lot to us as kids. This one particular episode, uh, which kind of just makes fun of modern art entirely. And it's kind of something that has been in our heads. Uh, you know, I don't know which episode, what the title of the episode is, but it's on YouTube, and we watched it, and we were like, yeah, that's, 
Uh, what's his name? The boyfriend has his like art show. Yeah, Mallory's. A Mallory's a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Scott McDonald. Scott. Hey. What? Yeah, Nick was his name. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't remember the actor's, the actor's real name, but I think he's still around. Um, yeah. Also, prep. We didn't need to prep. The prep was all in the art department. I think they're all here. I mean, they yes. built that. Yes, yes, yes. That was an empty space, and then uh, uh, it was entirely empty, and then uh, and then it was very full and very uh, and everything was working you know like everything worked yeah. it was yeah anyway, yeah Stephen Phelps our production designer did a very amazing job uh, uh, yeah in my, like, I just thought it was going to just be a, a white keeps an empty room with like a couple TVs and him in a cage and um, that would have not been as visually exciting and uh, I sent uh, Stephen some Namjoon Poik sculpture images and he was like this is uh, something he's very into and he has a whole like studio full of just electronic junk and things like that so they brought, uh, like brought it all down and just lived in the space for a few days and built all that stuff and uh, yeah I think that visually made it much more exciting because like in every frame there's at least some weird thing going on that you, uh, you know, yeah. would be better than a white wall. The costumes are really incredible too, and I think one of my favorite yes, parts yes. is the limo and the the art gallerist. <laughs> like it's just it's brilliant. Yeah, Christians here are uh, costume designer. Yeah, that's my favorite thing is yeah, uh, uh, Peter or uh, character Jason. He was wearing that like shirt. It was like a ninety nine cent um, bath uh, bath mat. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cool. Very postmodern. Very into it. <laughs> Um, I feel like there's such a natural cadence between the three of you, and how did you guys, was there a lot of improvisation when you were shooting, or what was the experience of, of working with the script and, and how you all worked together in such a quick time also? Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, well, we shot in sequence, which really helped, right? That's correct. I mean, because it was a four-day shoot, so, and the days were long. And um, we, we, you know, we shot from the script. And then, you know, Mike gives you an opportunity to kind of riff a little bit, which is nice if he wants to expand things. So, but we, um, I think we stuck to the script fairly closely, didn't we? I, I mean, so. we had to learn the bloody thing in like, you know, a day. He said, well, I gave it to you a month ago. I said, but it wouldn't print. <laughs> you know, I can't read the thing on Yeah, no, it was like yeah, a lot of pressure on it. But like my the scene, Theo's monologue, which is one of my favorite scenes, that was like that, that was, about, was improvised. That was about yeah, half yeah. there, half or even more improvised, and that was just one take, you know. Um, yeah, we were which is pretty I, amazing. We were. I think I was shooting Keith, but I was like kind of Keith's angle, and then he just kind of goes into it and said, so, "Oh, okay." And oh, there's some scenery to chew. That yeah. Is, yeah. Absolutely incredible moment. Yeah, and that's part of the fun of shooting fast. You know, on another shoot, we might have done a hundred takes, and it might have been different, but it's just so nuts, and that's really yeah, fun. Yeah, but you know, and Mike, a lot of it's your writing. A lot of it's your writing. It lends itself to being able to really get inspired to, to kind of, if you know how to improvise. His his writing is so taut and, and articulate that uh, you he gives you the grist for the middle. So it's just, you know... There's not a lot that you have to do to kind of go off. We've all worked together a bunch, but we had never worked with Hunter as an actor before. So it was like, it was like the variable, like the variable or whatever, but, you know, I think, it, I think we all agree. It was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> like 30 pages a day. Yeah. But we stuck pretty close to the script. Yeah, I feel like I stuck, I think I stuck maybe too much to the script at times. I was like almost like rigidly, like we have, I was on set for three days, and it'd be like 1 a.m. or whatever, I feel like we still had like 20 pages to go, so I was just like, no, this is what we're doing a little bit. And then watching it today, it's like, I think all the stuff that y'all improvise is just like so beautiful, that was really like had a fun time watching. But yeah, I mean, Mike's got some of my favorite scripts, um, always, so... I feel like for me, being there so quickly or whatever, um, I, I didn't have too much interest in like do, going off because his, his words are really fun to say and the scripts are really, really fun to read. So. 
Yeah, I was, I was pretty. I was of the three of us, you were the most on book. I was an asshole a little bit on the set. Like, I acknowledge that now a little bit. Like, everyone was kind of trying to have a fun time. I was like, no, we're making a movie. Uh, I don't regret it because I feel like in some ways, you know, there's a, a, whatever. I kept this sort of thing. But I was, I was, I was grumpier than everyone else. You were in the cage for four days. In the cage for three nights, and it was like cool to be around my friends, but they'd all go downstairs. And I'd be like, <laughs> we didn't have a key. <laughs> I feel like New York has played such an interesting role in your films. Can you talk about a little bit how the pandemic has maybe shaped your vision of New York and if that's going to like differentiate your aesthetic moving forward and, and the stories you're telling? Or is this kind of just like a one-off to what we were going through? Yeah, I mean, I just like, like, I don't want to make a period, like a period piece. I don't want to make like a sci-fi movie. It's showing making movies. Uh, in the moment, in places that we're near where we live, in places we go, so it's not really. I, I didn't think of it as like a pandemic thing specifically. It's just that's what's going on, and the, uh, the way it's changed is I don't know. I think it's you know it sucks, but it's also kind of funny. I don't know. People are like look really stupid <laughs> and seem unhappy <laughs> walking around on solo wheels and like uh, the shacks everywhere, and I don't know. It's pretty whack, <laughs> but I don't know. That should be, you know, I'd rather do that than try and make something that's set in 2018 or like the or like the year 3000. Did this change the way that you make films? Because I think you were shooting on a much tighter schedule than you normally do, even though you work with like pretty low budgets usually. Um, do you want to keep working like this tightly or not? Um, I'd be open to other stuff, but yeah, this wasn't, it wasn't really overly conceptualized, it wasn't like, it was just really wanted to do something, you know, I wanted to, uh, to make something, you know, it wasn't like, oh, what are we going to do to get into South by Southwest, what are we going to do to like, uh, you know, overly plan all these things, specifically with a, with a plan, it was just, you know, we want to start shooting now, we want to do something, and that's how it's doable. But if there was a more doable way to do something big and sick, I would be very pumped <laughs> to do that. Like, also, like, making this movie, like, seven months into the pandemic was really awesome to, like, have something to do. It just seemed like, like someone had to pull the trigger and do something like Mike. Uh, because I think everyone who was on set sort of felt like, oh, fuck, yeah, we can still do things. I feel like for, like, a, a year, a lot of us just were like, well, it's a pandemic, I can't do anything in some ways. So, I don't know, something about just, like, doing the thing with what you have, um, but for me, like, I think it was, like, it, it, it got me through the winter in some ways, I think, kind of having just done something instead of having a full year off. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I feel like we all needed something to do and to channel energy into, and I think it's even amazing we can all be sitting here, like, watching this movie together right now. I'm curious, it's funny that you guys were watching Family Ties to inspire this, and I also think it's interesting because it almost seems like a family affair in a way. It's like you use so many of the same crew and actors through all your works. What's that experience for you to be working with your friends? Oh, that's great. I love it. I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's easier to write when you know that someone can do what you're writing, and make, we're able to shoot faster because we have a shorthand. It's uh, and you know the stuff that usually sucks. Like at the end, of, like we use this weird camera, the digital Bolex, and you know it doesn't take like normal memory cards. So like at the end of the day, you have to like sit around for a hundred hours and download it. And usually that'd be like the worst thing on earth, but. Doing it with you know Sean and Steven with like fun, we're like drinking beers, listening to like music, and just like hanging out. I don't know. <laughs> so that's one of the upsides of working with your friends. I'd love to open it up to questions from the audience, if anyone has any. You don't have to. <laughs> no one's uh, twisting your arm. <laughs> I just want to say that you know I was up country in uh, the Adirondacks where we have a place and. Uh, I did not want to come to New York City to make a movie uh, in the middle of a pandemic. I was beautifully safe in this halcyon woods, away from any kind of contagion. But it's Mike and Craig who did such a brilliant job of producing it. Yes, yes. Major, major. You know, Craig and Sam, and I really have to say, they really were, yeah. We followed SAG to the letter in terms of the protocols and all that kind of crap. And, no, I mean, it made a difference. It really did. I mean, it set, it 
put us all at ease and enabled us to kind of congreg congregate to, to make a fucking movie, right? Because we, I, I was really frightened about the whole thing, like go back to New York. I mean, I'm paying rent every month in an empty apartment, but I figured I'd come later. <laughs> and then I go and shoot another one in February, and I go to Florida to do another one in August. So my kind of, you know, popped our cherries. Yeah. I mean, it got us over the, the kind of the, the, the weird paranoia of the whole thing, because the set was really flawless, and that helped a lot. Agreed. Okay. 100%. <laughs> Well, has anyone got anything? This is just uh, the big chance, because we're wrapping this up, I think. <laughs> Comments? Feedback? <laughs> yeah. Bugs and no. <laughs> yeah, we all eat bugs. <laughs> Some years ago, Mike got into eating bugs. So not true, not true. Secretly. <laughs> I, I read a New York Times article one night, <laughs> and maybe on Abbey and ordered some from Thailand. Yeah, I found uh, and they're like stashed in the, in the, they're they're in the kitchen. I had a giant stash of them. I didn't right. know what to do with them because I ordered them randomly, and they're just like stuck in my. Uh, I tried to force them out and be like, guess them to come over sometimes because I don't like them. And so I had this giant stash of them, and we figured, okay, this part of like the available is some type of thing, so how can we use these in a movie? So uh, I was able to get rid of them. Uh, did they expire? Yeah, no one, definitely no one asked for it, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Thanks. <laughs>